Good morning to you, brothers and sisters. So glad to be here with you this morning. Hope you had a good night's rest. I want to say welcome, welcome to you all. It says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell in unity. God loves to see us in this fashion. I want to say a special greeting. I was here last week. I heard that Nigel was here last week. Welcome to you, Nigel. Nice. Good to have you here. You know, dear Father is a very, very good friend. I'm not a long time. Just give him my love. And I say welcome to you also, my sister. Yes. We always meet in some different. I mean, should you? Yes. But we're here this morning to truly just give our thanks for all that he has done for us and to sort of us delve a little deeper into the relationship that God wants to have with us. You know, a lot of us, we like to boast about the things that we have accomplished in life. Because, you know, we have gone to, we have gone to a good school and we excelled academically. Or we went to a vacation school and we learned a good trade and we started doing good stuff and people started to, people start to, to acknowledge us. And sometimes it kind of swell up with it. And we, we tend to start gloating that but are better than you. And we pat ourselves on our backs, which inflates our egos. And somehow we convince ourselves that we are the standards. But is that the most important thing in our legal lives? We should never ever forget, brothers and sisters, that it is in God that we live that we move and that we are our being. So when we wake up in the morning, it is God who has afforded us that opportunity or that privilege. The air that we breathe. And in the knowledge that we have, it is God who has imbued that unto us. So boasting shouldn't be our first forte. Not at all. No. So Boast not on the things that you can do successfully. What you should be focused on is really what God has done for you and has been doing for you. That is what we need to be focusing on. So, a title for the message this morning simply, Boast Not. But rejoice always. And we, the text this morning is taken from Luke chapter 10, and we'll read verses 1 to 11 and then 16 to 21. Let us just offer up a word of prayer. Holy righteous Holy Father, we thank you so very much that you have brought us here safely this morning. We thank you for the word that has been prepared by you, and we just trust that. Those who are listening here physically, and those who are online, that you will just bless them through the word that will come forth today. We pray, Father, mighty, that you will just give us listening ears, and that we will just listen attentively, that we will imbibe what will be said, and that we will check the scriptures to make sure that you conform. says, as the time approached, 
for him, Jesus, to be taken up to heaven. Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. And he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But it says, but the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. So when the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. So what Jesus Christ was saying is that you, you do not see what I'm trying to show you. You're not here to serve people. We are here to offer life to people. So it says, verse 57, as they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Then he said to another man, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own head. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, but Lord, First, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, No one who puts a hand to the cloud and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. So, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ here was starting a ministry. A ministry that would be proclaiming salvation for the whole world. This message that Jesus Christ wanted to be proclaimed, by the time he started, there were persons who were being called into the ministry who wanted to find all kinds of excuses not to be a part of. So we see here in the latter part of Luke 9, three different individuals that were called and they came up with a different kind of excuse. But then, brothers and sisters, we realize now that 70 accepted the call. This is totally different from the 12 disciples that Jesus Christ had here. So it says in chapter 10, it says, after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every prominent place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send those workers into his harvest field. Then he says, go and send you out like lambs among wolves. We have to be given the same charge. Go and make disciples of our nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have taught you. The promise is, and Lord, I will be with you to the end of this age. So Jesus Christ can pick these 70 individuals and told them that no man is an island, they need to have each other's back. So he sent them two by two out there. And he reminded them that look, the harvest is really right. Right. And there's somewhere in, in, in Matthew, I think it's Matthew chapter 9, about 35 or verse 36, then let us turn there quickly. Let me see if I get there to say that. I think it's Luke chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, I think. Alright, 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore. To send out workers into his harvest field. 
So Jesus Christ was looking around and he said, you know, the time was right for you to proclaim this good news to the whole of creation. And what is very important, brothers and sisters, is to remember that they were not sent out to be judge and jury. They weren't to be like James and John who wanted to call down fire because things weren't going the way that they wanted to go. No. They were sent out to proclaim the good news that the kingdom of God was here in their midst. And Jesus Christ had to send some power in the kingdom. So he gave them the power to heal the sick. And they were even able to cast out demons. So in verse 9 of Luke chapter 10, it tells us, Jesus says, as you go out, heal the sick who are there, and tell them that the kingdom of God has come near to you. So the 70 went out, brothers and sisters, and they Followed everything that Jesus Christ said that they should do. But I truly believe that despite the fact that Jesus Christ told them that they should go out and heal the sick and do those things, I don't think they really internalized that they would have that kind of power. So when they went out there and they proclaimed the good news and they saw that they were able to heal people and that demons ran from them. The scripture tells us that they came back rejoicing. Because in verse 17 of Luke chapter 10, it says, The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us. In your name. So you can just imagine when they were coming back and they were rejoicing. They would have been boasting, they would have been gloating. And you can just 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 picture them talking to each other. You know, and you hear me saying to Daniel, Daniel, you, you, you hear me about when I say in Jesus' name, how did that was wrong? And now they said, then you remember the day they couldn't walk. And then I was proclaim Jesus' name and she just get up. You see the kind of power that they have? And they were just there in themselves, enjoying these great feet that they were able to accomplish. And they came back rejoicing and thought that Jesus would truly say, Well done, faithful servant. But when they said that even the demons had to flee before them, this is what Jesus replied to them in verse 18. Jesus don't say anything at all to them about what they did. Jesus just said, said I, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Father says he was telling us that he was victorious and ready over Satan for us. So it wasn't anything for us to gloat about the fact that we were able to to um, make demons flee from the force. Because remember that it is in him that we live, that we move, and we have our being. And Jesus reminded them in verse 19 that I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power so it isn't something that you should be boasting about. Because I told you that nothing will happen. But then Jesus Christ reminded them where their mind should be in verse 20. He says, however, do not rejoice that the Spirit submit to you. No, that is not where your, your mind should be. He says, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Boast not, but rejoice always that you have been found worthy to be a part of the kingdom of heaven. 
That is because Jesus Christ set his face towards Jerusalem to make sure that he would pay the penalty for our sins. Brethren, Jesus Christ sent the 17 disciples before him to pave the way, to announce to them that the kingdom of heaven was here, that all the atrocities that they were seeing around the place, all the poverty that they were experiencing, the kingdom was here to offer a new hope, a living hope. That they will be conquerors and that they will become light. So, so what we should realize now, brothers and sisters, is that we are a continuation, our work is a continuation of the 70. The 70 were sent out before Jesus Christ to proclaim the kingdom. So that Jesus Christ on his way could continue to do the work, show the power of the kingdom of heaven, and to let them know that he was going to pay the penalty for their sins. We know, brothers and sisters, we have a work to pay the way also, but not that Jesus Christ was going, but that Jesus Christ is coming. So us proclaiming the kingdom of God is to let people know that the kingdom of God has already been established, but Jesus Christ is coming again to bring into this kingdom all who have accepted the sacrifice that he gave up their life. So it is imperative of us brothers and sisters to make sure that we offer ourselves we need to tell God, here I am, Lord, send me, so that I can be one of the persons who will be using my voice to proclaim this good news of the kingdom. Another thing I want us to, 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 to take note of, brothers and sisters, is that Jesus Christ, he told the 70 that he was sending them a sheep among wolves. Remember that sheep? are petty animals. They need a shepherd to guide. Wolves are ravenous animals that is just set out to tear and to destroy. But you know what was nice about this story was that the 70 sheep that went out among the wolves, every single one of them returned and they were hurt. Because Jesus Christ protected them. Jesus Christ gave them a work. Yesterday we heard from Pastor Graham that no matter what happens out there in the world, if God has given you a work to do, nothing, brothers and sisters, can stop that work. If you get a gunshot and then broke down, pass you as dead, if the work wasn't finished, you're going to be revived so that you can finish that. So these 70 were sent out to prepare the way for Jesus Christ as he went through the Samaritan village to go up to Jerusalem. We are also sheep who are sent out among wolves. But remember what the Apostle James said in, in I, think, I think it's James 4, where he tells us that if we submit ourselves to God, God will give us the power to resist the devil. And the devil will, not me, the devil will have to flee from us. I think it's in James chapter 4. They quickly find that there. And this is one of the things we need to remember, brethren. That God has not given us a work to do that he knows that we cannot do. No. In verse 7 of James chapter 4, the Apostle, Paul, the Apostle James said, sorry, he said, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil. So God has given us that power to resist the devil. And he says, and he will flee from you. So brethren, the fact that we have been given this work to proclaim the good news 
of the kingdom of God. No words can divorce us. No words can name us until we have completed the work that God has given us to brothers and sisters. A lot of people think that Christians are too humble and we are too weak and soft. And they don't realize that we are not walking in our own strength. We do not do things unless we have been assigned that job by the Holy Spirit. So brethren, I want us, as we go out there to proclaim the good news, when God has given us the power, and we realize that yes, we are in tune to the Holy Spirit, so we hear the Holy Spirit say, put your hand on that person. When you see those miracles happening, don't go about gloating and rejoicing. And then you feel like we're going to need to leave this church and I need to start a court in the ministry. Because I need to let people know that we're going to need the spirit working in you. So you need to leave your church and come to mind. Because this is where the spirit of God is. That is not where our focus is, brother and sister. We are not to rejoice about our successes in our various ministries. But we need to rejoice that our names are written in heaven. That is, that we are a part of the kingdom of God, which we are proclaiming. So we are supposed to be in a thanksgiving mode at all times, my brothers and sisters. Thanking God for His grace and His mercy. Thanking God that He did not destroy us because of our sins. But He created us in His image and His likeness. And He said that the reason why He created us was for us to have an everlasting relationship with Him. So no matter what happens, brothers and sisters, that is going to be accomplished. That is where our focus should be. Giving God thanks that He has done what He set out to do. So remember, brethren, however, we should not rejoice that the spirits submit to us, but rejoice that our names are written in heaven. This kingdom, brothers and sisters, that we are to be proclaiming, this is the solution. To all the world's problems. Jesus himself told us that we should pray for it to come so that God's righteousness will be done here on this earth as it is being done in heaven. So what we are proclaiming is already established. It is not something new that we are proclaiming. It is there already. God wants to share it with us. So Jesus is returned to world to establish God's righteousness. That righteousness is going to wipe away all the tears from our eyes. All the pains, the heartaches, death. All of those things will be wiped out the earth. It will erase injustice, brothers and sisters. Hate them. And it will bring godly love to the hearts of humanity. Don't you feel nice to be a part of this message that is to be broadcast? They say this saying was from St. Teresa of Avila. She said, and I quote, Christ has no body on earth but ours. He has no hands but ours, no feet but ours. Ours are the eyes through which the compassion of Christ looks out to the world. Ours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. And ours are the hands with which he is to bless 
others love. So we are the Jesus that the world is seen now. And that is why Jesus Christ said, we should let our light shine so that men may see our good work. Men should see Jesus Christ operating. As Paul said, it is not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. You know what the Apostle Paul said in um, in Galatians 6 and verse 14, the Apostle Paul understood very clearly what Jesus Christ was saying to the disciples. He says, may I never, may I never boast except in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. So Paul understood that every single thing that he was doing was because of the power of the Holy Spirit given to him by Jesus Christ. So, brothers and sisters, remember that it is us we should be planted clay in the hands of the Savior, brothers and sisters, so that he can use our hands, our feet, our eyes, our mouth to proclaim this good news to the world. We are the continents of the 70. So let us pray the way let us pray the way. Let us arouse up the, the yearning and, and, and the, 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 the love for the Father in people now. Let us open the eyes of people so that they may see Jesus Christ. That they too will be praying, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And I said earlier on, that first 70, they were charged with the responsibility of paving the way. As Jesus Christ was moving up towards Jerusalem to offer his life at Calvary's cross for all of us. And we are now charged to pave the way for his return here to establish the kingdom. So therefore, brothers and sisters, pray the Lord of the harvest. Jesus commanded them to pray. He has commanded us to pray also. The work before us is very great. We need help, brothers and sisters. We need hearts that have surrendered to Jesus Christ. That is allowing the Holy Spirit to lead them. That they may see with the eyes of Jesus Christ. That people out there are scattered like sheep without a shepherd. We need to have compassion on them. We need to share this good news with them, brethren. So we need to ask the Lord every day. Because He's Lord of the harvest. He's the one that is gathering in the grave. We are just His hands and feet. So we should need to pray to the Lord of the harvest. To send out laborers into this harvest. So, prayer is very, very important as we do the work of God. And don't fret. Although Jesus Christ said, I send you as lambs among wolves, Jesus Christ sent them out to let them know that they need to have a certain kind of heart. The kind of heart that they need to have was so that they could trust God and not to seek to manipulate and abuse the power that he has given to them. Going out as lambs among wolves doesn't seem attractive when you hear gunshots firing all over the place and stuff. You cringe. But that is what Jesus Christ said we should go. He says he's going to give us power. He's going to give us power. And we will see. You know, one thing Pastor Graham said yesterday that I really enjoy. He says that there's two things working opposite to each other. This is a fear in God and death in fear. If we Remove fear and replace it with faith. We are going to be doing great because God has given us that power. He has taken away the spirit of 
hero. So what we need to do is to not be focusing on the crime and the violence, but focus on this goodness that God has in store for us. So the mission of us sheep among wolves is a very good one, it's a very good mission. And it's a hopeful one because it's a living hope. So just as all the seven to return from among the wolves, and not one of them was eaten by the wolves, so it with us. So as we go about proclaiming the kingdom of God, brethren, do not be amazed at the work that Christ is going to do. No. You're going to be seen healing them because God is still in healing. Overpowered the enemy and even cast down demons. So, once again, our focus should not be in gloating or boasting, but making sure that we are giving God thanks. That He is the life giver. That He has afforded us the opportunity of being sons and daughters in His kingdom. So, boast not, but rejoice, rejoice that God is for you and He is with you. You are now part of the solution. You are now a reconciler. Continue to encourage. Continue to enlighten. Continue to be a disciple of humanity, brothers and sisters. One by one. So that they too can become kingdom citizens. For those of you who are watching online, I pray that if you have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, now is an opportune time for you to do that. There is nothing else that is better than you to realize that without God, you are nothing. So just humbly bow before God and just offer up your life. No way can somebody need to say this is all and that is God. God is a fixer man. Anything that is broken to peace, he will take it up. He will fix it. And he will make it to become a worthiness. So I pray that you will truly find this peace that you have been looking for in the wrong places. Because that peace can only be found in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Holy righteous loving Father, we thank you so very much for your love for us. We thank you the day when you revealed Jesus Christ to us and he came in the form flesh, become like one of us. We thank you that he was so focused that nothing could hinder him from doing this thing that he set out to do, saving mankind. We thank you also, Father, Mary, that you have chosen us to become a part of your hands and your feet and your body to spread this living hope that you have in store for all of humanity. We pray that you will once again just give us the boldness that we will be able to go out there without any fear to proclaim this good news to let people know that what they are seeing in the world is not what is there for them. Because the enemy is still the big of this world. But let us realize that a time is coming when they will just be rejoicing because God is going to be here. You are going to be here with us where we can truly worship you, honor you, glorify you daily. We thank you for the healing both physically and spiritually that you are doing at this very moment for your children and even other individuals out there. We pray that as you do this healing, Father, that you just let them know that this is truly coming from you so that they will truly be appreciated in surrender their lives to you. We pray, Father, that each and every day more and more people will get to know you so that they will truly bow before you and proclaim that Jesus Christ is truly Lord and Savior. We pray for joining mercies now, Father, my dear, as we 
we need to go about our business. We continue asking to hear our prayers as we intercede for others. Help us to focus on what you are all about so that we can join in this great work of bringing peace and solace to the heart of man. We bless you, we praise you, we magnify you, and we just say thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.